Good evening all, I am Anuja from MBAB and I warmly welcome you all to Impact Lecture Series 2. Today I'm honored to, I'm honored to present our guest today, Mr. Jayakrishnan T, founder and CEO of Asimov Robotics Private Limited, which has listed in Forbes 2018 as one of the most promising AI and robotics companies in India. So welcome to Rajagiri. Thank you very much for the introduction. Let me share these slides with you. So yeah, uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, today, actually, uh, we are going to talk about uh, one of the most, uh, you know, uh, uh, important and uh, uh, latest aspects of uh, robotization, uh, both in the manufacturing se sector and as well as, uh, as a part of our day-to-day -day life. So this digital transformation has become one of the uh, latest buzzword of the industry. Uh, in uh, today's session, we won't be to, uh, talking too much about the digital transformation, whereas we'll be more focusing on the robotic uh, aspect of digital transformation. So the role of robotics in digital transformation. So let's try to understand uh, what is the need of digital transformation. So you know that uh, you know that uh, you know the, uh, the the latest challenges uh, from the manufacturing and other sectors are like you know increasing uh, productivity. Like uh, the population is increasing, and it's actually if you compare the uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Yes. If you compare the natural resources, it is at least four to five times. So, and also in urban areas, it is uh, highly populated. So, uh, in proportion to that, the demand of various uh, you know facilities are uh, skyrocketing. So, we need to have uh, the productivity increased in the same proportion. That is one of the requirements. And then, uh, if you look at uh, uh, today's challenging work around environment. We need to have a proper uh, way of managing the resources. And also uh, another uh, reason is that uh, we are actually having a shortage of resources because of uh, the uh, demography as well as disinterest in doing many jobs like blue collar jobs. And then uh, even if uh, people are interested in doing blue collar jobs, the quality is also very poor. Another requirement is in terms of uh, the customer experience. So customers are highly demanding nowadays. So, uh, and there is a lot of competition as well. So in order to cope up with, with that, uh, we need to have a better cust customer experience so that uh, that can be achieved uh, through uh, the adoption of changing requirements. Every day, if you look at uh, any industry, let's say like uh, automobile, if you take automobile, you can see that uh, uh, you know uh, every day there is a new model is coming up. Uh, that is why because uh, the, uh, the customer is actually demanding for that. So in accordance with that, you need to make changes in the uh, in the factories and in the in the processes. In, uh, I mean, in the uh, manufacturing setup, uh, there may be changes required. So you need to adapt to changes and time to market. Actually, time to market is something like you know if you if you try to manage the process well, you can uh, make a new product available to the customer in a short span of time. And then, of course, uh, when uh, the data as well as processes are uh, digitized, then it would be easy to uh, introduce any kind of innovation uh, into our uh, you know uh, what is it like uh, uh, both in manufacturing and other other, other field we can bring in innovation very easily. And then uh, reducing risk. Uh, risk is not only in terms of earlier, if you look at the application of robotics in risky environments, you can see that uh, it was used for uh, uh, planetary explorations and uh, mining and various fields where, you know, uh, where uh, contagious uh, handling in contagious items, uh, CNBC, like, you know, chemical, biological, nuclear contamination handling. Nowadays, uh, particularly for, uh, after the pandemic, 
covid 19 uh, safety has become a household term uh, like you know it is no longer the healthcare is no longer a vertical it remains as a horizontal so these are some of the major uh, reasons why we need digital transformation so if you come to the uh, aspect of digital labor uh, you can understand that uh, you know first of all uh, it requires two two ma major aspects one is like you know we need to uh, as i told you earlier we need to understand uh, the the use of data how, how and the various uh, processes how it is organized and how it is uh, um, made applicable to a human context so that is very important that is what is called the process automation typically uh, actually rpa is not robotics rpa is software robotics where you know you 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 organize the data then you organize the processes and then apply human context to it so that uh, you know uh, many many uh, blue collar or repetitive or uh, mundane jobs can be automated and then if you look at the machine intelligence uh, you know that ai is developing fast and then we are able to have uh, uh, you know what in terms of uh, the uh, computer uh, computational capacity capabilities computational platforms and in terms of algorithms there are a lot of advancement coming because of that you know the ability to uh, what is it like perceive and learn and respond to the environment is possible just like emulating human beings so that if these two things coming together uh, then the digital labor is possible so now uh, one important aspect uh, which i would like to share with you is that if you look at the digital transformation it is uh, you can see that it's very close with uh, uh, industry 4.0 uh, many components uh, in industry 4.0 are actually uh, present for the, the digital transformation also maybe uh, if you look at uh, the the manufacturing uh, you know uh, elements like you know additive manufacturing and uh, rapid prototyping sort of things may not be present, but all other uh, uh, components are also present in industry 4.0. So in, in short, if, uh, if I put in very short words, like, you know, when a digital transformation is applied to the industry or manufacturing sector, sector it is called industry 4.0. So now coming to the robotics or uh, robotic workforce, you know that today, uh, uh, if, you, if you look at the latest trend in the manufacturing sector, uh, uh, which is called uh, flexible manufacturing or uh, industry 4.0, industry 4.0 uh, and flexible manufacturing again is very closely related. Flexible means, as I told you earlier, every time there is a change and we need to adapt to the change. So uh, in that uh, flexible manufacturing, uh, what robot actually does is like, uh, it is unlike, uh, uh, you know, the good old factory robot, which were in cages, like, you know, they, which were in a well-defined work cell uh, in iron cages and was actually, have been, had been performing repetitive jobs. So now, uh, if you look at the, uh, when we try to adapt these changes, let's say like, you know, uh, again, I go back to the automotive industry, uh, wherein you need to have a, a, a problem fixed like uh, let's say like the radiator is not working good of an automobile so you need to change the radiator you need to increase the area of the radiator or the fins of the radiator so this problem actually it is a connected manufacturing environment uh, because of that the problem is actually immediately transferred to the industry and the customer is uh, reporting problems and because the process automation uh, this has been and then uh, of course the data may be pushed uh, into the cloud from a uh, location uh, far away from the factory and that is accessible to the factory and then factory actually when, when we try to do this we may have to uh, uh, make changes in the processes we may have to see whether the new radiator is able to be properly fitted inside the existing vehicle without uh, much changes so maybe uh, 3d modeling is done and then um, that modeling is, uh, model is then uh, simulated in an environment and that en environment uh, can tell you whether it can be properly fi fitted and when 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 it comes to this uh, selection of tools selection of material Everywhere we need to uh, take, uh, we, we can take the advantage of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is it like digital transformation. You can check the previous data, whether this uh, material is good or how how it can be, a, uh, how, how, in what way there, there, there can be a betterment. And then while fixing also, uh, maybe like, like one worker who was expert, expert experienced in this uh, fixing the radiator is not present 
or maybe some some people are not trained in, in a uh, remote factory location so if there is existing data you can make use of the i'm just putting an example make use of the uh, you know uh, augmented reality so that they can uh, get trained very really fast in a short um, you know what is it like uh, learning cycle so uh, they can get trained on the job itself with, with the help of uh, augmented reality just like that a lot of aspects are a lot of processes are there interconnected interrelated so uh, the robotics uh, uh, within this uh, in, uh, industry 4.0 or digital transformation is like there is a special type of robot robots are being used in uh, industry 4.0 they are called collaborative robots collaborative means uh, they can collaborate with the human workforce so these two workforce combined to be called as collaborative workforce where one uh, one set of workforce will be purely robots one set of workforce will be human so such kind of robot uh, robot should have a set of capabilities uh, to collaborate with human beings we will see in this slide what are those capabilities first of all uh, because of that uh, these robots are not inside a cage they have to have uh, continuous interaction with uh, with the human workforce so uh, which requires a capability of uh, typically called as in our terms back drivability means force exchange so it has to uh, interact with human beings by exchanging force it, let's imagine that two people are shaking hands each other so then they are actually exchanging force so in in conventional robotics if that happens you might have heard that uh, the a person uh, was actually killed by a robot uh, as he accidentally got inside the work cell. So uh, I think it is uh, almost um, uh, four or five years back, I think. So just like that, uh, uh, if, if somebody gets into this work cell of this collaborative workforce, nothing happens. Uh, so it, it has force complaints. It takes the force, external force uh, inside, and then uh, it, it actually comply with your movement. So if you want to stop the robot, you can stop. Or if you want to teach the robot also, you can. it is very easy to teach a collaborative robot by putting it in the training mode and then grabbing the end effector in space, then you can train the robot. So it's just one aspect of that. Uh, these robots have to continuously uh, grab information from the environment. See, this picture actually is of a very famous robot called iCub. Uh, so this is not a factory collaborative robot. Uh, so this is where I'm just trying to uh, tell you the importance of uh, simultaneously looking at uh, the industry 4.0 as well as the digital transformation, even in our day-to-day -day life. Why? Because you know, uh, in, in factory, typically manipulators are used, but in 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 uh, robots that cooperate or coexisting uh, with uh, human beings in our day-to-day -day life, definitely uh, a human form factor, a human geometry, a human appearance is more entertained. So then uh, also, uh, as I told you, it has to continuously fetch information from the environment from a set of uh, sensors, an array of sensors, like it can be like cameras, it can be uh, like tactile sensors, or it can be like uh, joint encoders, um, where you know if, if you try to move the robot then the join and corners will start working and then uh, it can be like uh, proximity sensors it can be lidars for mapping lidars is widely used for mapping the environment for autonomous navigation and all and uh, then so all these sensors have to be continuously monitored and then obviously uh, in in day to day robotics like you know uh, the uh, service robotics so called service robotics you need to interact with the robots so it can be through vision or it can be through natural language processing interaction like verbal interaction so that also is there so it has a set of sensors so you just take the case of uh, um, navigation autonomous navigation you might be using odometry that is wheel encoders and you might be using im inertial measurement unit and maybe using lidars uh, for the mapping purpose and also for the localization purpose and indoor GPS where you can fix these uh, beacons on the top of a roof and then you can uh, use the method of tranquilization to identify the location. So all these sensors are not used, uh, uh, you know, one after the other. These are used simultaneously, which is typically called a sensor fusion, where you can set weightages for the each sensor so that you know you can you can uh, get the best performance out of it. So that, that that is typically called a sensor fusion. So first of all, as you can see from this picture, there is an object which is shown to the robot, so the robot has to identify. Uh, what type of object it is by looking at the shape, 
and then there will be first where there is a camera so that the camera will take the image and it can be uh, a 2d image and it can be sometimes 3d image because the studio cameras can be used depth cameras can be used so it, it will be actually identifying the origin of that object the shape of that object the dimension of that object the color of that object everything has can be grabbed and then it can be transferred to the uh, it can be interpreted like uh, basically first camera calibration is done and the coordinates are identified the shapes is identified and then that has to be converted to the that is from the camera perspective but when it comes to handling that object let's say the robot is actually going to grab this cube so robot hands has to be uh, aligned with or, or calibrated in terms of the camera coordinates so it has to be first transferred to the camera coordinates and then the signals like you know uh, this is like uh, I cup. I hope this robot is having seven degree of freedom, which means that seven links are joined together to make the arm. And there is a finger, which is a, an active finger uh, with uh, multiple fingers. So uh, what it, it has to do is that it has to trace a trajectory from the current position to the uh, to uh, reach the, the, the final position to reach this object. So the trajectory has to be traced. So in 3D space, so that is the end effector. End effector means a point of interest uh, which we are controlling. So now in this case, the hand is being controlled. So in 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 accordance with the every instance of the end effector coordinates, we have to uh, compute uh, join coordinates. We have to tell we have to tell the motors that at every instant what should be the position of the motor or what should be the speed of the rotational speed of the motor. So this is this is computed after getting the. Uh, the uh, the coordinate map to the uh, you know the robot hand uh, or the robot arm coordinates uh, from camera coordinates this is computed and then that is sent to the motor so that it goes there and it grabs and while grabbing it has to measure the force sometimes it's a it can be a hard thing or sometimes it can be an egg or maybe a paper so we have to apply different types of forces which will be again computed while grabbing the, the through different ways like you know sometimes current can be sensed sometimes force sensor torque sensors will be used so like we said it has to be handled so it's very complex I, i'm not getting into the complexity of that uh, because uh, you know it involves you know if you look at the image processing so uh, apart from the separate use of artificial intelligence uh, even this uh, autonomous navigation vision processing nlp are using uh, artificial intelligence so, so, so the basic functionality particularly when the robot becomes hyper dexterous like many joints so there is there are many ways of uh, uh, solving a problem and also uh, you know the, the data has to be processed meaningfully so you might be using the uh, ai uh, uh, extensively for this purpose and then in this case you can say that which, which is the best way of handling this object so machine learning can be used so i'm not getting into the details of that now uh, i will also tell you what is our approach in solving this problem so let us try to understand uh, how, what are the challenges in uh, digital workforce uh, transformation, uh, which is which means that how how do we how do we immediately solutionize a problem? So uh, the the main challenges are like uh, you know uh, now this is like uh, this is not a gradual change. Uh, now everyone is you know that every change if you look at it is exponential. So all uh, if you look at the history of uh, our um, you know. What is it like uh, the uh, um, history of manufacturing or history of any development or uh, any revolution if you look at uh, you can say that uh, it, it is uh, every time whether industry 1.0 uh, uh, during the introduction of the steam engine industry 2.0 uh, electricity and industry uh, 3.0 automation now industry 4.0 oh, everything if you if you look at it is uh, the the changes where every 10 years or 12 years there was a change and if you put together changes that itself is an exponential hockey hockey stick curve so the, the problem here is that everything has to be transferred uh, as uh, transformed in, in a short span of time so we may have to change the infrastructure we may have to retrain or reskill the people how to use these uh, tools how to use this uh, you know uh, what is it like facilities so we have to make them understand and make them comfortable working with this uh, robots so there are a lot of uh, training aspects required and then uh, human workflow integration is another challenge like robots and uh, humans are 
uh, working together. So their movements have to be tracked and which way is the best way to, to seamlessly blend with the human workflow. So because of all these uh, reasons, uh, there will be a delay in uh, transforming to the digital workforce. So I'll tell you what, what are ways that we look at it. So hereafter, uh, what we do with uh, dealing with these issues that will be discussed. So we basically have a set of platforms, uh, platforms in the sense, uh, like uh, as I told you, if you look at the manufacturing environment, most of them are uh, manipulators. So what you can see from the picture is a manipulator, which has got seven degrees of freedom, actually 40 degrees of freedom, two such manipulators are joined together. So it has uh, uh, 14 degrees of freedom. And then uh, these manipulators can be reconfigured if you want, uh, if you don't want to use one uh, joint, you can freeze it. So very flexible manipulators. And then it is light payload manipulators. It is actually not for industrial application, but to prototype an industrial use case, this is widely used. Let us take a look at uh, the, the um, uh, manipulators in working. Uh, as I told you, it is uh, just to make it interesting, some interesting use cases. This is these are not actual use cases. It's primarily used for research purpose, but to show you the capabilities uh, and also to get a better uh, response uh, while putting uh, YouTube, we made this. possible you know that uh, handling liquid means you need to maintain the post you need to maintain the orientation and uh, always uh, you know uh, maintain the orientation so that the, the liquid is not spilled out so that is very important you need to have six degrees of freedom to do that so this is our flagship uh, platform which is a humanoid platform which is a very high, high customizable platform uh, which has got a uh, a set of capabilities like it has got a, an autonomous mobile base and it has got a by arms with a, uh, four or five degrees of freedom and uh, the gripper is passive and then it has got a neck with the two degrees of freedom uh, and then uh, it has got working eyes uh, that is actually a display and these robots are primarily used for uh, use cases such as you know hospitality purposes um, you know uh, meeting and greeting customers and then interacting with, with them and uh, helping them uh, clearing their doubts uh, so the one you, which you are seeing here is a police robot on the right hand side which we have sold to kerala police uh, so she is working there as a lady sub inspector so the same robot only we, we just customized uh, so the customization is like as you step in, uh, the robot will come approach you, and then it will uh, it will take your details and uh, will print you a, a visiting visitor pass, and then it will connect uh, you with the, the officers. And in case of urgent meeting, it will establish video calls. It will clarify your doubts and uh, the details of all police stations across uh, Kerala, and then. Uh, uh, the robot is actually recently equipped with a set of uh, COVID screening functionalities. We will we'll see that. So, and then we have same robots uh, we have supplied to hospitals and then um, other organizations uh, where the front office management is. This robot is primarily doing front office management. And it's also used for uh, caregiving for elderly, sick, and disabled people. Uh, so, that use case, uh, not in India. So that is uh, one of the pressing uh, requirement uh, outside, uh, particularly from geographies like Japan, 
in other places. And so we we have been, uh, I mean, uh, we, we were fortunate to uh, visit Japan and then showcase these pro uh, pro products uh, there. And then uh, uh, we had a lot of discussions are uh, going on using that robot. We'll take a look at the video now. So this is uh, almost all use cases here. Where do you live? I am living in Kochi. How long have you been in Kerala? Two years. Where do you live? I am living in Kochi. How long have you been Actually, uh, the first unit was uh, deployed at Mumbai for HDFC Bank, uh, the first version. So there are various different versions. Uh, the one in the bank. Have you been in Kerala? Two years. We could uh, take it to Honorable Prime Minister and uh, ask him the government. And coming to the COVID uh, functionalities, uh, as uh, this uh, you know COVID-19 outbreak was there during last year, we deployed two robots uh, at our uh, campus. Uh, there are at least 40 companies working there. So the purpose was like uh, the first robot was actually uh, stopping the visitors at the entrance and then it will talk about uh, the COVID and how, how, how you can protect yourself from getting infected and um, uh, if infected, what has to be done. All these doubts will be clarified and also was dispensing uh, sanitizer and mask. And the second robot was actually uh, like uh, it, it was able to answer any questions related to COVID, uh, which has been taken from the WHO database. Because on those days, even now also, you can see that uh, the social media and other you know media are flooded with a lot of fake news. So uh, the second robot was doing that. We'll take a look at that. Similar robot, we have uh, uh, we have deployed this robot during the local body elections to see whether how efficient this robot can work in a completely unstructured environment. The robot was successfully able to screen at least 300 voters during that uh, election. You can see some of the you know video clippings here. Where do you live? Hi. What all things we check is that uh, as the as uh, people come in front of this robot, first it will check uh, how many people are standing in front of uh, me, like you know, in front of the robot. So if two people are closely standing inside a frame, then it will, or two or more people, it will tell you that because of COVID, you have to um, you know uh, keep a safe distance, and then it will check whether the mask is put put on properly. If it is not put on properly, it will advise you to put on properly and uh, otherwise if mask is not there, it will, it will ask you to put on the mask. And then uh, it will check the temperature. There is a temperature integrated on the left hand. So that is why it is raising the left hand to, to align with your forehead and the temperature is measured. And the right hand is actually, instead of uh, the, pre, uh, the previous uh, way of uh, dispensing sanitizer, now this has got a pump and the reservoir, so it will pump as soon as uh, the person shows uh, his or her hand underneath the hand of the robot, it will pump sanitizer. And very recently we have added uh, pulse oximeter also and a set of questions to see that this person is actually coming from a COVID infected area. <laughs> that routine. 
Hi there. Kindly wear mask to prevent the spread of COVID. Now, please wear mask and Next, what we did is like uh, during last uh, April, we quickly prototyped a robot because you know we had understood that COVID is actually uh, you know uh, we uh, we actually started working uh, with a solution for addressing uh, the, um, the the Nipah outbreak uh, when Nipah outbreak was there. We started working with a robot for uh, you know hand, uh, managing um, um, you know various uh, tasks inside the. Uh, isolated um, uh, ICU. So uh, we 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 started working with that robot, and then when COVID came, we came to know that COVID and Nipah is uh, completely different. Nipah is uh, life threatening. It is not as contagious as ro- uh, I mean uh, 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 COVID. Whereas COVID is not life threatening. It is spreading very fast. So um, we have developed the robot. We have subsidized that robot to make this robot. We took only 15 days to make, make this robot, which is a comprehensive solution for uh, uh, the caregiving uh, for uh, this uh, COVID patients. So during those days, actually, a lot of tested positive asymptomatic patients were admitted to hospital. Uh, wherein they were able to take care of themselves, but uh, getting exposed to them was very risky for the healthcare workers. So we have developed this robot, which is named as Karmi Bot, and uh, this is actually fortunately um, sponsored by actor Sri Mohanlal. So we have supplied this to Medical College uh, Columbia City, and uh, I've been working uh, successfully there. So we'll take a look at this robot. Uh, before that, let me explain you that you can see a black box there that is for collecting the trash and the white box on the top is for uh, you know uh, keeping the food and um, other um, items so that it can dispense it deliver it to the patients and then it can also see a reservoir and a spraying mechanism so uh, first uh, the robot uh, will uh, actually uh, it will prompt you to load the food and uh, other um, items inside the white box and then set the number, uh, a particular number of the uh, rooms or the, the uh, bed uh, to which it has to deliver these uh, items. So, and then it goes there and it stops there in that uh, right sequence. And in the return sequence, in the uh, in, in the return journey, it will it will take the opposite sequence, like it will stop uh, all at the uh, at the uh, uh, you know uh, at every room to collect this uh, trash. And then it will ask the patient to put the trash inside this black box. This black box is actually enabled with uh, this um, UV light. So if you put the trash inside and close the box, then the UV, UV will start working and it will disinfect the trash. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, the
excuse me sir so you are on mute sir and jagran should unmute yourself ट्रांसपोर्टिंग मेडिकल मैक्रोबयोलॉजी सैंपल्स बिटवीन Uh, ICUs and then uh, pharmas laboratories uh, because you know this patients admit admitted uh, to SICU surgical ICU are highly prone to infectious diseases. So this was uh, actually a problem earlier, even before COVID. Now post COVID, it has become a very pressing problem. So this actually reduces the number of uh, workers like medical runners transporting these items to places. This can be. thought as uh, scale down ambulances moving through the corridor it's a very challenging dynamic environment you can take a look at the robot so and then comes back with the report and finally this is a latest product which is not yet released this is a very cost effective solution for covid screening which is almost same functionalities that you have seen in the big robot some of our customers and some of the press reports that's it yeah Hello, sir. Yeah, tell me. Sir, am I audible? Yes, you are. Sir, uh, the robots were initially made to assist the humans in various stuff. Uh, but uh, my question is, in the future, would they replace the human labor from the workforce? And if they do, to what extent? Like, if, if like uh, the robots can be programmed to do repetitive jobs, right? And they need not be paid like salaries and stuff. so what what's you say on that see that's what we we started saying this is the time of uh, you know uh, digital work labor collaborative workforce um most of the uh, blue collar work jobs are actually uh, i mean uh, blue collar jobs we are not getting resources we are not getting uh, youth uh, uh, working for this uh, mundane repetitive jobs Uh, one example is like in in coming days you can see that uh, supermarket and also for security jobs you know most of the security staff are they are about 50 uh, retired hands so now that that is a the very potential use case and for cocoa and harvesting you won't get anybody in kerala i am just putting couple of examples so there are a lot of uh, blue collar jobs repetitive jobs where robots can serve that will be the first thing the robot will be serving if at all and then um, because of um, this um, um, you know advancement in ai uh, most of the jobs is actually going to get vanished uh, again uh, that is a, that is i i don't see it as a problem but whereas you know it, it is like we have to come out of our um, you know what is it like uh, limitations so if you think that we are only able to do this kind of job it will be a difficult time for us the actual problem uh, is is that we are overpopulated and this is a connected economy we cannot just keep aside you are you are um, actually uh, business management student so i don't have to explain you you cannot uh, run an isolated economy so the question is like if we don't do that we will have to buy it out from uh, other countries so and another reason i would say is that if you look at uh, the development which is happening particularly in urban areas uh, if you look at the construction uh, real estate uh, all these things are in the z direction so uh, 
would that be possible to create these structures without the help of automation or uh, with, the, with the help of machines? No. Just like biotechnology, another example. Without biotechnology, we cannot get enough food to, to, to address our requirements, current requirements. So these are examples. Just like that, various uh, you know facets of our life, we need the support of technology. Now, when COVID came, uh, people are actually withdrawn to their homes and then uh, this technology is coming in the forefront. Likewise, we have to look at it very positively. We, have, we should be able to reskill, upskill ourselves. That is the only solution. And of course, population control is also required. Hello. Mm, I and, think there is no more questions. Yeah, I'll just add one more uh, line to the previous uh, answer. Uh, you might have seen that uh, Indra Hospital Logistics Robot is actually replacing a set of workers called medical runners. So I was also looking at from a humanitarian perspective that uh, these people are going to lose the job. But you please understand one thing that the surgery is done at only uh, exactly at, at 10 rupees or 10 rupees, 10 Indian rupees. Uh, so that is a very special um, insurance scheme. So to run the hospital uh, as economical as possible and to minimize the expenses, uh, this is actually a good thing. So as you told, uh, robots are paid only one time, like when it is purchased. So then after that, a uh, few, uh, few years later, you will get uh, start getting the ROA. So then uh, you can still continue to do the surgery for 10 rupees. So that is, you won't see this uh, in, in, you know, in the, from looking out from outside, you won't see all this. We have to understand why it is there. And it has uh, obviously a much more important purpose to keep people safe there. So these are all the good thing about robotization. Uh, thank you uh, for a fun induced session. Uh, I kindly request all the students to fill the feedback form uh, to get the e-certificates. Uh, sir, it was a really, really nice session. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you all. It is really sad to say, but we have a right at the end of our session. Now I call upon Ashudi for expressing the word of time. Honorable speaker, Mr. Jay Krishnanti, faculty members and dear students, good evening all. I'm here to put my gratitude into words and end such a beautiful evening with a vote of thanks. On behalf of the whole Rajagiri family, I extend my heartiest thanks to our respected speaker, Mr. Jay Krishnan T, CEO and founder of ASIM Movie Robotics Private Limited, one of the most promising AI robotics companies in India. We are extremely delighted to hear from such an experienced and eminent person like you, sir. Thank you for introducing us to the digital world of robotic process automation. Next, I would like to thank the Institute Innovation Council of Rajagiri Business School director and the college management for providing this amazing opportunity for the young minds to explore. I would also like to express my gratitude to all the faculty and students for their presence and valuable contributions to make this session a great success. Once again, thanking you all for joining us today. I conclude my words. Thank you. <laughs>